Hello and welcome to In-Depth, I'm Tina Jha. Nearly 6 lakh Indian students are studying in 86 countries across the world. The United States of America, Canada and Australia account for two-thirds of this number. Currently, an estimated 2.5 lakh Indian students are enrolled in American universities. Now, in the United States of America, foreign students are granted what are called F and M visas to study in the country. According to the country's Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, foreign students must maintain their legal status by enrolling in a varsity certified by the Student and Exchange Visitor Program. If this is not done, it is considered to be a case of immigration fraud. More than 100 Indian students have been charged with violating the immigration laws in the country after they were caught enrolling in a fake university. The Department of Homeland Security in the USA in an undercover operation revealed how foreign students were involved in a pay and stay scam to stay in the US. India maintains the students could have been lured into enrolling themselves in the fake university. What is the entire case and how were Indian students lured to enroll themselves in a fake university in the United States of America? We'll find out in depth today. We'll also take a look at what the Indian government is doing to resolve the matter at the earliest. On Saturday, India issued a demarche to the American Embassy in New Delhi, expressing concern over the detention of 129 Indian students in the USA. The External Affairs Ministry is closely monitoring the situation and taking proactive measures to address the situation at the earliest. The issue at the heart of this is the enrollment of Indian students in fraudulent universities in America. The latest case arising out of students enrolling at a fake university has the attention of the Indian government. The Ministry of External Affairs asserts that the students may have been duped into enrolling at the fake university and that's why they should be treated differently from the recruiters who have duped them. Here's a look at the latest on this case. More than 100 Indian students were arrested in the United States of America last week for enrolling at a fake university, allegedly with the aim to remain in the country. The university in Detroit's Farmington Hills was part of an undercover operation by the Department of Homeland Security designed to expose immigration fraud. According to the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, 130 foreign nationals enrolled at the University of Farmington were arrested for civil immigration violations. The arrest took place across the United States, in New Jersey, Atlanta, Houston, Michigan, California, Luzania, North Carolina and St. Louis. All arrested students currently in detention face deportation. Eight others, mostly Indo-Americans, were charged criminally for conspiracy to commit visa fraud and harboring aliens for profit. Federal prosecutors say fake university was being used as a pay-and-stay scheme and foreign students knowingly enrolled there to falsely maintain their student visa status and remain in the United States. However, immigration attorneys who have spoken with students or with family and friends of those arrested are pushing back against the government's claims. They say the students were not aware of the varsity's illegitimate operation, saying the fake university lured these students by promising them credits for their previous master's programs. The main issue is that uh, there was a fake university which was set up by the U.S. immigration authorities themselves. And this was a kind of trap in which they wanted to catch those people who were entering the U.S. illegally, in the sense that uh, they were entering the U.S. through a fake university. Now, what India has said is that a distinction should be made between the students and those who were involved in there were eight Indians also have been arrested uh, on the charge that they were running a racket to uh, to enroll students in the fake university so that they may be able to st stay for a longer period in the US without having to do any studies. What India has said is that you have to make a distinction between the students who actually were entrapped, you know, 
who were lured into a trap and those people who were involved in you know running an allegedly fake university so uh, this is what the main issue is according to us media reports the fake university was set up in 2015 to try to catch foreign nationals who had initially traveled to the us on student visas but wanted to stay further in the country the university in the detroit area was operated for almost 2 years by special agents of homeland security investigations as part of an undercover operation according to a list on the study in the states page on the university's website that refers to the student visa categories that allow international students to legally enter the united states The University of Farmington is on the Department of Homeland Security list of institutions eligible to enroll students in the country. The varsity is listed on page 259 of the 282 pages of student and exchange visitor program certified schools and programs. The university's website also showed pictures of students in classes and libraries. It advertised tuition for undergraduates at $8,500 a year. and $11,000 a year for graduate students. Besides, it also had a fake Facebook page with a calendar of events. However, after the scam was busted, it was revealed that the employees of the University of Farmington were undercover agents for the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, and the campus was an office at a business park in a Detroit suburb. In a statement, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency said, Foreign students are granted F and M visas to study in the US and they must maintain their legal status by enrolling in a varsity certified by the student and exchange visitor program. However, since the Farmington Varsity did not offer courses, the students were using the program as a way to work in the country. India has issued a demand basically saying that you must distinguish between the students and those eight other people who were involved allegedly involved in uh, running this fake university uh, they they have said that th not only they but the several prominent indian americans and lawyers in the united states who have said that uh, you cannot uh, lay a trap for example officially lay a trap lure people into a trap and then say that they have violated the law these are innocent students they did not know that it was a trap they thought they were coming to study in a university and uh, once this distinction is made then the students should be allowed to go free india registered a diplomatic protest with the united states soon after the sting operation surfaced the government says students could have been tricked into enrolling into a fake university urging us authorities to not deport them against their will A demarche was made to the embassy of the United States in New Delhi by the Ministry of External Affairs. India expressed concern over the dignity and well-being of the detained students and sought immediate consular access to the detainees. Following India's appeal, Indian consular officers were allowed to meet students at the various detention centers throughout the United States. Legal help, assistance and guidance is also being provided by Indian consulates and mission The Indian Embassy in the United States has also opened a 24/7 hotline to assist family members, friends and relatives of the Indian students arrested by the American authorities. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and her team said top priority is being accorded to the case. The government has ensured welfare of the detained students, saying it will continue to work with the US authorities and other stakeholders to resolve the issue at the earliest. India's, uh, I think, the way American uh, system has handled it uh, has uh, made India uh, a bit uh, uncomfortable, especially when it pertains to young students. And India's demarche is related to the fact that perhaps it's not simply about uh, because the issue here is not simply about uh, students getting hooked on to uh, a, a fake university. This was a sting. that was carried on by uh, the uh, us department uh, us inland department of immigration who was basically trying to assess um, uh, the potential for such cases so they set up this fake university they lured the students with their advertisements and uh, in in some ways students became uh, a scapegoat in this process 
Uh, and therefore, I think India has issued a demand saying that this is not simply the fault of Indian students. It's also something that American authorities deliberately did to make a case to the, the government that there is a real problem in their immigration system, which may well there, which which there, there may well be. But I think the way Indian students have been treated there is, is has caused a lot of concern to Indian authorities. This is the second such case when the Department of Homeland Security has used a fake university to unearth a fake student visa racket. In 2016, the ICE had arrested some 21 people, mostly from China and India, for similar charges for enrolling at the fake University of Northern New Jersey. The Trump administration has further clamped down on undocumented migrants and visa overstairs over the last two years. In two massive operations last year, ICE agents detained 146 people at a meat supplier in Ohio and another 150 at a trailer manufacturer in Texas. U.S. immigration authorities are resorting to tough enforcement tactics to catch foreign nationals overstaying in the country. With inputs from Asta Kulshresht, Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Every year, lakhs of Indian students venture abroad for higher education. The number of Indian students in the USA and Australia as well as Germany are rising every year. However, the number of cases of fake universities are also on the rise simultaneously jeopardizing the future of foreign students. The United States continues to be the favorite destination for Indian students looking for a foreign degree. India is the second largest source country of foreign students in the US, China being the first. According to a 2018 report, there were over 2 lakh Indian students in universities across the United States in 2018. Between 2014 and 2017, the number of Indian students studying in the U.S. went up from 1,32,888 in 2014-15 to 1,86,267 in 2016-17. But it's not just the American dream luring Indian students. Australia is another favorite destination when it comes to higher education. In 2018, there were 68,000 Indian students in Australian universities, up from 60,000 students in 2016. The UK, though, has witnessed a sharp decline in the number of Indian students going there for higher studies, largely due to its strict policies on post-study work visa. The number of students from India fell from a peak of 24,000 in 2010-11 to fewer than 10,000 in 2016-17 as per the report by the Migration Advisory Committee. The number of Indian students in the UK fell by 11 percentage points since 2010. While the UK seems to be losing its charm, Germany is fast emerging as an alternative to the US and the UK, with many German universities offering zero tuition fee education to foreign students. Indians form the second largest group of international students enrolled at German universities. In 2017-18, the number of Indian students in Germany stood at 17,570. In 2015-16, 13,740 Indian students were studying at German universities, up from 5,998 in 2011-12. While more and more Indian students are aspiring to study abroad and make it big every year, there is an increasing need to be careful about the scams and bogus universities that dupe students of their money and their future. And there are so-called fake universities and colleges in the U.S. who offer, you know, uh, degrees and so on and so forth. And they try to get foreign students there because the fees paid by foreign students is very high. But there is an important point to be made here. The US Embassy in the relevant country, which is for example India, before issuing the visas, it is the duty of the US Embassy to verify the details and the credentials of the college or the universities uh, which are offering admission, which have offered admission to students. And they are supposed to grant student visas only in respect of those universities uh, which uh, are known to be uh, good universities, legitimate universities and not fake universities. In April 2016, hundreds of Indian students faced deportation for enrolling in a New Jersey university that turned out to be fake. 
The fake university was used by agents to grant certification needed for legitimate student and work visas. In 2012, US authorities denounced another university, Harguan University, for visa fraud. 94% of its students were Indian. In 2011, the fake Tri Valley University was raided and shut down. It had 1,800 Indian students. The perpetrator was found charging foreign students $2,700 in tuition per semester. At the time, U.S. authorities allowed only 435 students to transfer to other universities, while the remaining had to return to India. So there is a problem in terms of how, what kind of regulatory mechanisms we have. But I think the fake university in in the West is more of a problem in terms of immigration. That what uh, you know, where our students are going to study, uh, those institutions need to be legit. And if they are not legit, then the question arises: How do we manage uh, this process? Do we have systems in place that can ascertain that that, that uh, students actually go there and study, or not, and not uh, become part of a of a of a sting operation like this was happening there, or become part of an operation that basically takes money and doesn't deliver? As per RBI data, spending of Indians on foreign education is on the rise. From 1,932 million US dollars in 2014 to 2,776 million US dollars in 2018, but so is the fake university's trend, ready to lure unsuspecting students and later dupe them for their own vested interests, making it essential for the students to do a proper background check before heading overseas. With inputs from Astha Kulshreesh, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. The United States of America is the most popular study abroad destination for Indian students. Despite reports of diminishing job opportunities for international students and changes to the H-1B visa that allowed students to live in the USA after graduation, every year several students fall in the trap of fraudsters as well. Here's a detailed report on the right procedure for enrolling into a university in the United States of America. Indian students aspiring to study in the United States have a strict list of do's and don'ts, but every year several students fall into the trap of fraudsters. India is the second largest source country of foreign students in the U.S., with over two lakh Indians currently studying in various American universities. Schools and universities in the United States admit students twice in a year, first between March and May, and then from August to September. The United States has an open policy of welcoming international students from all countries. Those students who are in India, for example, if you want to study, if they want to study, then the most I think uh, important thing to do is if you recognize that there is a university that you want to go to, you need to first go to the high commissioner embassy of that particular country here in this country. So when you reach out to those, uh, for example, if you want to go to Britain, if you reach out to the British High Commission here, they will. Tell you basic assessment that this is a legit university, that this is a university that actually has that that is providing uh, you know logistical and administrative support to the, uh, and there is a there is an actual campus that exists. So I think uh, that I think increasingly students should be doing whether they go to Australia, whether they go to America, whether they go to England, uh, they should first go to the respective counselor. They should uh, high commission or embassy or or, or uh, um, uh, consulate. And I think from there get that information before moving forward with either uh, getting formally admitted or, may, or giving money to the system. There are two types of non-immigrant student visas in the U.S. F-1 and M-1. The F-1 visa is for non-immigrants wanting to go for academic studies and/or language training programs, while the M-1 visa is for non-immigrants wanting to go for non-academic or vocational studies. A student willing to study in the U.S. must start planning for admissions at least a year in advance. One must have the prerequisite educational qualification. If one is applying for a master's course, he or she must have a requisite degree from a UGC-affiliated, recognized, or listed university in India with the required qualifying grades. A student must also pass the GRE test. Most universities in the USA insist on GRE scores for admission to graduate programs. He or she must take the TOEFL test and have the required grades to enter the desired school or university. Depending on the school or university, the cost could be between 40 and 50 lakh rupees for two years of graduate studies in the states. 
the student is also required to show an amount equivalent to one year's cost in the form of a bank deposit and the source to fund the second year's cost. They must also find a way to prove one's intentions of returning to India. A visa fee ranging from 160 to 190 US dollars has to be paid in Indian currency at designated banks and the student must carry their passport to the bank while depositing the fee. He or she should also make an appointment for a visa interview. It can be done through the Visa Facilities System website. When present for the interview, he or she must answer all questions honestly. As far as India is concerned also, well, there is, I would say, uh, pretty comprehensive information and data which is available today, both in printed form and on the internet, uh, regarding colleges and universities in America. So, uh, Indian authorities, you know, they, they can conduct a preliminary verification. Most American universities have strict rules and follow stringent eligibility criteria. For an undergraduate course, a student must have cleared 10 plus 2. For graduate or master's courses, 16 years of education is a must. Some institutions also accept 15 years of education into their bridge or master's program. Good scores in entrance exams like SAT, TOEFL, GRE, GMAT, IELTS, etc. is necessary. They also require strong recommendation letters, to the point statement of purpose, personal statement, essays and resumes is also needed. Certificates of achievement and extracurricular activity participation can enhance one's application. Relevant laws is that the Embassy of India and the Consulate of India in the US, they have a right to uh, demand consular access to these students, which means that the officials of the, of the embassy, they will go and meet the students and they will check, about, you know, how they are doing, whether their health is all right, whether they are being treated in a humane manner and so on and so forth. So this is, there is a right of consular access which is involved here not so much right of students in the US. Despite reports of diminishing job opportunities for international students and changes to the H-1B visa that allows students to live in the US after graduation, the United States continues to be the most popular study abroad destination for Indian students. With inputs from Astha Kulshresht, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in this edition of In Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and get back to us with your feedback and suggestions. Thanks very much for your time.